Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to The Weekly Option. This is episode 13 on June the 9th, 2018. I'm your host, Eric, and as usual, you can reach me if you have any questions at eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's eric at theweeklyoption.com. I love hearing from listeners, answering any questions. If you have any specific questions, a um, few people have asked me questions about trades that they did not want to be uh, put on the podcast, but we had a great conversation about it nonetheless. So uh, welcome. Thanks again for listening. This week is a very important week because uh, this is the uh, the meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee, otherwise known as the FOMC. This is the basically the policy portion of the Federal Reserve Bank, and we will be expecting on Wednesday expecting them to announce a 25 basis point increase in the Fed funds rate. The Fed funds rate is the rate that banks are able to borrow from one another. And this is very important because when it gets more expensive for banks to raise money, they in turn make it more expensive for businesses and uh, consumers to, to raise money as well. So if it costs more money for banks to borrow money, then it will cost more for businesses to borrow. That will actually, or it should, slow the investment or at least the debt-driven investment that businesses have, uh, which in turn tends to slow the economy a little bit. The reason the Federal Reserve will raise the rates is because they want to either temper or slow down inflation. This also can be a good thing because it it shows that they are bullish the economy. So even though it slows things down or has the put the potential to slow things down, when the Federal Reserve is reducing the rate, they are doing so because they don't believe in the economy. So right now, it's a sign that we have a strong U.S. economy and possibly a strong global economy. And so they want to make sure that inflation does not sneak up or creep in and really um, make all of our wealth or make all of our, our savings uh, worth less money. So that's it. This past week, the Dow was actually up just shy of 3%. It was up 2.766%. In points, it was up 681 Point three two points over the week. So it's one of the strongest up moves that we've seen uh, in the last month, the last few weeks at least. And likewise, the S&P 500 was also up 44 points higher or 1.6% increase over the week. So not a bad start to the month of June. We will see this week. Uh, last week, we had a pretty slow earnings week. We're also going to be slow in our earnings this week as well. On Tuesday, we'll hear from H&R Block. On Wednesday, we'll hear from Kroger and Progressive Corporation, um, otherwise known as the Progressive Insurance Company. On Thursday, the company I'll be looking at is Adobe Systems. Um, Adobe has an amazing suite of software applications for uh, businesses and developers alike. And also the retailer Michaels will be, will be announcing on Thursday. So with all of that being said, let's dive into the results from last week. So uh, we'll start with our covered call. I mentioned putting on a covered call on Dell Technologies, the symbol DVMT, Dog Victor Mary Thomas. Looked at their July 85 call. And honestly, this the reason we were looking at this call is because the price was so high on it. The stock at the time was $84.85. So this is only a 15 cents out of the money call option. Or really, this is an at the money call option that we're selling. Uh, we could sell that for $4.60. And we hope to make 5.6% on the on the on the trade there. So um by putting this trade on, uh, it worked out in our favor. Uh, the, the call option actually is a little bit lower, but the stock is higher, significantly higher, uh, just shy of, well, really, it's about $4.75 higher. Um, 
or three, I'm sorry, $3.48. I'm looking at the wrong factor. The stock finished at $88.33. So that's up $3.48. And the call option itself actually fell 60 cents. So you could close this trade out right now. If you want it, you could buy that, uh, buy that call back in, keep your 60 cents there, and actually walk away with the $3.48 gain on the stock, right? So all in all, if you were to do that, you would make $4.08. Or if you believe that Dell stock is going to remain uh, strong over the coming weeks, you just hold on to this, uh, this position. Keep your stock, keep your call option, knowing that it's going to be exercised. And at the end of the day, you will have made your 5.6%. Your now, this was a July option. So July expiration is uh, July the 20th. So we have quite a while, uh, quite a ways to go, essentially five weeks if you want to stay in this trade. But, you know, taking money off the table isn't a bad thing. If you, if you keep this on till the end, you will have made the 15 cents on the stock, right? Um, the difference between $85 strike and the $84.85 uh, where the stock was, and you get to keep the $4.60, and that's $4.75. Or you can close the trade out tomorrow on Monday. Actually, uh, yeah, close it out on Monday and uh, ultimately lock in $4.08, which is still a you know 5% gain in one week. So um, again, if you can do 5% a week, life's pretty good. So uh, I think that's enough explanation there on the covered call. Let's take a look at the credit spread we looked at last week. On General Motors, uh, symbol GM, George Mary, or I guess just General Motors, um, the stock was trading $43.20. And we looked at a June trade. So this was the June put 42 half 42 um, or 42 half 42 put spread. Uh, we looked at selling that for 16 cents. I'm knowing fully well that this is a 50 cent spread, so our maximum loss was 34 cents. So this week, stock is a dollar and five cents higher, finished $44.25. And if you were to close out that spread right now, meaning you were to turn around and buy back that 42 half put that you sold and then sell out the 42 put that you bought, you would make 13 cents. I'm sorry, yeah, you'd make 13 cents. So you sold them for 16 cents, and right now, the market will let you out for three cents. So you could lock in 13 cents on the spread in one week. So, you know, $13 when you only risk uh, a total of 50 cents or $50 is a pretty good return on a, again, this was a one week trade. Um, actually, it's a two week trade because we know that June, uh, June expiration is this upcoming Friday, June the 15th. So, with this being a June trade, this was a two-week trade. We ultimately made 32%. Uh, if we if we hold it until Friday, that's 32% on our money. If we close it out on Monday, that 13 cents represents a 26% return on the risk that you took. So total risk of the spread is 50 cents. Uh, we we took in 16 cents. If we exit for 13, that's pretty good pretty good return so I like that again so we we're two for two last week and then just to make things even better our our debit spread was on Bank of America so we looked at the June so once again this this was a two-week trade the June 29 29 half call spread stock was sitting at 2940 so really that that call the call option that we sold the 29 half strike was 10 cents out of the money. But um, you guys will hear me return. I like trading Bank of America. It tends to give some good, uh, it, it's high, uh, highly liquid, so a high amount of liquidity. And it tends to be priced um, very well. It tends to have some some pretty opportunists or, or some great opportunities in there. So by paying 30 cents for this spread, and we know that the maximum value is 50 cents, so our maximum loss was only 30 cents. And we hope to make 20 cents on our money. So making, uh, you know, $20 when you only risk $30 is a, that's a 66% return. Well, the stock went from $29.40 to $30. To $30. So this is a fully in the, in the money spread. Um, the spread itself only increased 7 cents. So the option spread 
is 37 cents right now if you were to close out um that's seven cents that's making seven cents on that total risk of of 30 cents from last week that's a 23 percent gain again i think you can hold this trade until friday and if stock stays where it is on friday you will actually be able to make make the full um, measure the full 20 cents that we expected so in dollar terms you risk 30 dollars and you were trying to make $20. So you made $7 on that $30 of risk. And I'm saying I would hold it. I would definitely hold this trade for sure until Friday so that I could go ahead and make my full amount on the amount that we were that we put at risk. So that's it. Let's dive into this week's trades. I won't hold you guys too much longer because oftentimes people really are looking forward to this one. So the covered call. We're going to take a, uh, I'm looking at a company I've never really traded before, but it popped up um, when I started running numbers, uh, a company called Global Blood Therapeutics. I believe it trades on the NASDAQ, um, symbol GBT, George Bob Thomas, GBT. We're looking at the July 50 call. So right now stock is trading for $46.15 and we're able to sell this call for $7.80. Now let me come out with the caveat here when an option trades for that much money especially in the in the sort of biotech or pharmaceutical medical arena there may be more to come there may be something here that i'm missing maybe an fda trial maybe something is um really expected because that's a lot of volatility being priced into that option so all in all if we if we if this stock over the next five weeks finishes at or above fifty dollars, right? We will have made we'll get to keep our seven dollars eighty cents in the option, and we'll make uh, three dollars and eighty five cents in the stock movement, which leads to a total of eleven dollars sixty five cents return, and that would be a twenty five point twenty four percent return in a matter of five weeks. So. We're going to keep an eye on this, see what happens. Um, I'm telling you right from the start, this is a, for an option, for a $50 option to have that much uh, volatility in the at the money call, um, there may be more than meets the eye, but I definitely wanted to present it on the show this week just to give you guys an idea of what's out there if you really look each week. Um, sometimes some of these really do work out well. So uh, that's the covered call. Let's, let's hop over to the credit spread for this week. So... Really, I'm looking, wanted to use one of the companies that's having earnings. So I took a look at Kroger, symbol KR, Kevin Richard. Kroger stock right now is trading for $25.36. I'm looking at selling the July put, 25-24 put spread. So that's a $1 wide put spread. We're going to sell it for $0.36. Cents. That means that our maximum gain is $0.36. Cents. And our maximum loss, of course, is going to be sixty-four cents. We're hoping to make thirty-six percent on our on our capital at risk. So we're, we'll have one dollar or one hundred dollars for every spread that we put on at risk, and we're hoping to make sure that we keep that thirty-six dollars that we're going to bring in. So that's what I'm looking at on the on the Kroger spread. Um, we'll see how that plays out next week. And last but not least, I had to turn back to. The ETFs, I think I've mentioned on the show before, I really do like trading options on exchange traded funds, especially as long, well, as, long as they have a decent amount of liquidity. So um, over the last few weeks, we've seen a lot of movement from crude oil. Um, crude oil has taken a bit of a plunge. And a lot of times in the fuel markets too, even though people expect higher gas demand in the summertime, um, when summertime actually starts to happen, you see, you see, uh, really, it's one of those sell the uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact. The the fact, uh, the expectations out. Many of the companies that sell gasoline have already supplied or have an idea of their supply for the summer, and now uh, tend to have prices fall off. So not a bad thing for the consumer, and we've certainly seen crude oil fall. So uh, with the USO. Oil ETF trading for thirteen dollars twenty seven cents. I'm looking at the July put thirteen point five thirteen put spread. So the July thirteen and a half thirteen put spread. 
I'm looking to pay 26 cents for this and it's a 50 cents wide spread. So I'm going to pay 26 cents for it and I hope to make $24 or 20, 24 cents on that. If this thing fully works out and this thing stays in the money, I know that in five weeks I get to keep my $24. So making $24 when you only put $26 at risk, that is a 92% return on your capital in five weeks. So that's a pretty strong uh, amount of return. I love, I don't like, I love this trade. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Once again, definitely reach out to me if you have any questions. Again, you can find me at eric at theweeklyoption.com or you can find me on, uh, you can you can find me, you can contact me through the webpage, www.theweeklyoption.com. I hope you also got a chance to take a look at our YouTube series, The Five and Five. You can find our, our YouTube um, channel, The Weekly Option, or you can just go to the website, under the videos tab, I put the five videos there. Actually, it's six videos, but five and five is cover. It's five videos recorded over five days, roughly five minutes each. So they're really short, but they will explain the trade uh, strategies that I use on this podcast. So with that being said, I hope you have a happy trading week. Thanks once again for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.